I think the title waitlist kind of related to the feeling that I wanted to have when it came to this situation. Like I felt quite anchored and chained in this situation and I wanted to kind of just float above it all. I think lyrically it was just the first time that I approached a song being like, okay, I'm gonna talk about myself. I'm gonna talk about the moments where I craved validation or where I was kind of chasing after someone or something that I couldn't get. And I was putting like, I, me at the center of this song, which is something that I re didn't really do before. It was a bit nerve wracking. It felt like kind of reading my journal aloud. Um, but I feel like those are the songs that I've connected to as a fan. And hopefully my fans kind of connected to that sense of like vulnerability and being really real about how I was feeling. Cardamom and Jade, as your eyes streamed, on the night you showed your volcanic side. And I'm afraid to need validation, waiting for the day when you finally try. I feel like seeing someone's volcanic side or them when they're really angry is like a massive marker in any relationship. It's where someone reveals that kind of uglier side to them, that side of them that's kind of explosive and almost dangerous. Um, and I felt like the idea of a volcano and magma and heat and energy um, was a good way to describe it. There are sand flies in the champagne. You are closed off, I am so drained. But I sparkle in the rare case that you tell me I'm your sun ray. I think the idea of being someone's sun ray is like both beautiful and dangerous because it's like, okay, I wanna be someone's reason for living. Like I wanna be the center of your world. I want you to need me. And I think that wanting that from someone is unrealistic and, and you know, you're gonna be disappointed. And I think often the way that you get kind of roped back into an unhealthy situation is somebody being like, I need you to save me. Like you're the only one. I'm starved of your affection. You are crushed under the pressure, but you won't change. No, you won't change. I think wanting someone to change at their core is never really gonna work. I think that's one of the most dangerous ideas to go into anything with, being like, okay, I love you. And there's this list of things that are massive red flags, um, but we would be happy if they didn't exist. You can't force anyone to be anything that they don't wanna be. And there's something kind of sadly resigned about that line. Cause it's like, I can't make you change. I don't wanna wait for you. I don't wanna wait for you. I don't wanna wait for you, but I need you. So I won't go. I wanted it to almost be like the thoughts going round and round in my head on a loop. It's like, I don't wanna wait, I'm going, but wait, I need you. I don't know if I can do this without you, but I don't wanna wait but I need you and this kind of back and forth that you go through when you're maybe like thinking about whether to end things with someone. It is this sense of like wanting to be close to someone and still loving them, but knowing that they're probably not gonna change and they're probably gonna be bad for you. Tethered to the person you could be, rereading our text from the strawberry days. Just give me a sign that you want me. Just give me a sign that you wanna stay. So for the opening of the second verse, I wanted to kind of introduce the idea of fantasy. I wanted it to be like, okay, I have an image of you in a perfect world. This is how we would relate to each other. This is how much you would love me. This is who you would be. And I'm so attached to it. And I feel like a lot of people do that. You know, at the beginning of the relationship, things are beautiful and you're in that honeymoon period. And then things start to go a little sour and you're like, well, it was beautiful back then. So maybe you could be that again. Maybe we could be that again. In this song, this is the point where I like gradually start to realize that you can never go back. There's blue glass in the soft rain. You are passive, I'm in pain. But I sparkle in the rare case that you tell me I'm your sun ray. I'm starved of your affection. You were crushed under the pressure. But you won't change. No, you won't change. When I think about the contrast of like glass and water, I just imagine like glass shattering and there's this sense of like some someone breaking free but also there's this like hint of like violence maybe, or there's some kind of conflict. And I don't know, I felt like it was a really powerful image because it's also that sense of like transparency and like the fact that I'm looking at all of this through this very specific rose tinted lens that is gonna shatter at the end of the song. And I usually know my strength, but here I am at 90 degrees bent, a metallic taste in the back of my throat, 
watch your deltoid flex as you cough on the phone. I think with the bridge, I wanted there to be this sense of urgency to the pace of the story. Like I wanted it to feel almost frantic. And I just imagined like this couple like sitting at dinner and the, the other person just on the phone, like completely distant and you're in so much pain and you realize that they're not even seeing you. They're not even in the room. And I've lost my grit and I'm in my head. You're so withdrawn and I'm standing there keeping wool over my eyes, keeping wool over my eyes keeping wool over my eyes at the end of the song is kind of this sense of like, this isn't promising. Maybe I'm not gonna leave after all. <laughs> I'm very aware that there's wool and I'm gonna keep it there. Um, and I wanted to end the song with this sense of like, will she, won't she? You know, will she leave? Has she found the strength? And this whole song kind of ends on that ambiguous note. I think I've always wanted to kind of mix the classic and the nostalgic with something that feels new. Like I was listening to the Neptunes a lot and I was also listening to a lot of kind of like old 90s dance music. I was listening to Britney Spears. I was also listening to a lot of like ambient music and rock music. So that's why there are those kind of like Cocteau Twinsy guitars in the background mixed with these like really relentless drums. And I think my favorite songs kind of have that element where you're like, have I heard this before? But there's something like distinctly new about it. So I wanted to kind of mesh those two feelings. 